My name is Ran. I'm a data scientist at Argmax. We provide NLP and recommendation solutions. And today I'm going to talk to you about a simple solution that might help you find uh, more of your uh, client data. Uh, so why do I mean by that? So here's our client. Uh, they gather a uh, lot of information from different company, different sources. And they all pretty much uh, gather the same information, uh, but some use different CRMs, some use email, some use uh, Snowflake. All of them have uh, different uh, naming conventions. Uh, so they end up taking the same data and naming it in a lot of different ways. And that's a problem whenever you try to, uh, to retrieve this data. Basically, you need to uh, go to many companies and you need to uh, join all of these companies together to one uh, table. And if you don't know the columns that you're supposed to join on, then uh, uh, you can join it. And not only is it uh, time consuming, it's actually uh, because your sample uh, isn't uh, random anymore, it might actually introduce bias to your future solutions. Uh, so our goal is to build a model. This model gets a column and it will predict the most relevant column to join with. Uh, also, uh, because our customer has many uh, companies, the model should be able to adjust whenever we get a new company to join the mix. Also, one of the key, one of the reasons why they came to us with the product, because it took them a lot of time to join the data together. So this uh, solution needs to be uh, in real time. Uh, so uh, our customer have a lot of data, but basically what I'm uh, using is only the column names. So if you think about it in terms of uh, NLP, uh, column names aren't exactly uh, sentences. They don't have the internal structure. Uh, they don't have the, the, the richness. Uh, so what I'm left with is really not a lot of uh, data to work with. So uh, the first thing I did, I took uh, the logs and Whenever I find a join, obviously there's a connection between the two columns. Uh, but what if there's no join? It doesn't mean that there's no information. Uh, they just might didn't know they can do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the joins that I knew, do know, and then I'm going to train uh, an embedding space. And then I'm going to use this embedding space to suggest uh, new columns. So here's an example of the data. It's not actually the client, but it's an example. So we see that we have a client and customer. Uh, we say have user ID and user index, uh, date and date time. We know, we know it's the same thing, but we also need to make the model uh, figure out uh, that it's the same thing. Also, we have uh, the bucket ID that tells us if they belong together or not. And we also uh, created the depth column that tells me how many time each column, each, uh, column uh, used to join. So uh, the overall steps, first we need to pre-process our data, and then we need to figure out the right way to vectorize it and to measure the distance. And uh, then we can use the nearest neighbor approach to, uh, to suggest uh, new columns. So let's start with the pre-process. And uh, because we are dealing with a lot of companies, uh, we really need it to take it easy, because you don't want to over-process your data. Uh, you might end up with a solution that works great for the company that you see, but doesn't work for the general uh, companies that will join later. So we took a waterfall approach. Uh, first, we have these guys. Uh, we have uh, special characters. We have uh, capital letters. So uh, we broke these. And then we have these guys. They don't have capital letters. They don't have special characters. Any idea how can I break them? Okay, no one had a job interview, so we used word break and uh, dynamic programming. Uh, so the first step is to build a vocabulary. We use the uh, American large, but uh, column names aren't exactly uh, words. So they have a lot of abbreviations and a lot of uh, uh, technical terms that we had to add all a bunch of, a bunch of these to the vocabulary. Uh, next, we uh, recursively break the words and each time we check if the break part is part of our vocabulary or not. But also we see that this process is redundant. The uh, uh, last layer is happening before and the uh, first layer happens next, but it's ba basically the same thing. So uh, we also keep in memory everything that we've done before. 
Uh, this way we uh, save on running time and in uh, memory. Uh, next step is spell check. Um, for that we use a Levenstein distance. Uh, basically we, we measure how many uh, steps we need to take to move from one word to another. So from the word from to fork, there's one. And from kitten uh, to sitting, uh, we have uh, three. So this is uh, about a, a spelling mistake, but what about the abbreviation? So we actually needed to uh, weight the vowels differently, because abbreviation usually drop the vowels. Uh, next, uh, we had to use the data augmentation. Here's another example. We can see here the bucket IDs, but, uh, and we have all the different columns that were joined together. We see that it's not very rich, and we have to use some sort of augmentation. Uh, so first, we use synonyms. Uh, we added random synony synonyms into our uh, sentences. Next, we used abbrevi abbreviations. Uh, we took a dictionary of abbreviation, and we also uh, created random ones uh, by dropping the vowels. Next, we had to create a misspelled word uh, for our spell checker. And now we need to vectorize it. So the first step was uh, TFIDF, and it didn't work, work very well. Then we tried uh, word to vec. Uh, actually, uh, at first we used uh, already made uh, word to vec. A funny thing, the spicy uh, uh, word to vec, the small one, doesn't ac actually give you a word vector. It just gives you a random uh, number. So when we fixed it to the big number for the 300, it worked. Uh, and then when, when we got uh, more data, we were able to train a uh, word vector to a uh, new word to vec. Uh, and also we used the depth uh, feature to add uh, weights by the importance of the feature. Uh, in terms of distance metrics, so uh, why won't we use the Levenstein distance? Uh, so basically Levenstein, Levenstein distance doesn't capture the uh, semantic uh, relation. We can see here the difference between kitten and cat is five, and the difference between kitten, uh, kitten and sitting is three. Uh, so the semantic doesn't uh, keep. Although cats do sit a lot, so maybe that's something. So uh, we used a cost and similarity to measure the, uh, the distance between the embedded vectors. In the latest case, right? Yeah. And then we use the nearest neighbor, and some would say that's not the fastest uh, algorithm. Uh, actually, it worked pretty well for us, but we can always uh, uh, accelerate it using GPUs, using rap rapid. Uh, next step is to adjust it for new companies. So we all know uh, these examples, how we can take a word, and then we can uh, use it to, uh, to perform vector uh, uh, operations. So we forced the company name into the sentences, and now I can use the company name as a vector, and I can basically move the solution from one company to the other company. Uh, last step is deployment. Uh, so we used SKLN pipeline, and a lot of our solutions needed to be uh, uh, adjusted, so we used the uh, uh, transformer mixing. But when you go to pickle it, it doesn't save all of it. It only saves the SKLM model, so great. So if you want, you can actually, uh, uh, if you work from the current direction, the directory that you saved everything, everything works. But as you move, uh, nothing, uh, everything breaks. So we ended up moving to cloud pickle that address exactly that. And next, we created an, an API for it, and uh, we closed it in a Docker. Here we can see some examples. Uh, we can see here DTG, and we see a uh, delivery DTG. We see a uh, delivery date. We see year and month. We can also see a customer ID, a contact ID. Here we can see uh, estimated profit. So we, say we see estimated mar margin, estimated revenue, total, uh, total profit. Uh, so in summary, this uh, problem seemed uh, pretty complex at the start, but then when we broke it apart, we found that it's very simple and elegant solution. Uh, be careful not to over-preprocess your data. 
uh, whenever you can use dynamic programming instead of uh, recursion and use Pickle, uh, Pickle Cloud instead of Pickle. Thank you. <laughs>